Hello class! On my previous video in which I discussed about the units of measurement until you finish the types of error, I have mentioned about our next topic concerning the vectors and vector addition. Our objective on this lesson is to differentiate the vector and scalar quantities. Name a vector quantity and also to perform addition on vectors. There are two types of quantity in physics, namely the scalar quantity and vector quantity. Scalar quantities are quantities that are described by their magnitude. For instance, whenever you are walking from your home, going to school, the distance between the two places is considered a scalar quantity. Another example is area. Mass can be considered also as a scalar quantity, as well as volume. But I'm talking about the volume pertaining to the quantity for a three-dimensional space enclosed by a closed surface, not the volume pertaining to sounds. Now, let's see the other type of quantity to determine the difference between those two. The other quantity is vector quantity. These are quantities that are described by their magnitude and direction. Example of this is when you drive a car from one point to another going in a particular direction. Let's say the car is moving 40 km per hour going east. The magnitude is 40 km per hour pertaining to speed and the direction obviously is east or the car is going east. Another is when you throw a pencil. It can be upward, downward, or it can be sideways. The important thing here is that every event or example in vector quantity includes direction. So in summary, scalar quantities are quantities that are described by their magnitude only. On the other hand, vector quantities are quantities that are described by their magnitude and direction. How to name a vector quantity? Please refer to the illustration shown on the screen. Two different examples are shown here. The first thing to notice here are the coordinates. In Cartesian plane, as you recall your grade 7 topic, it has four quadrants. Now please imagine a map, like a Philippine map or a world map. You may notice the directions given north, east, west, and south. Going back to the quadrants, we now have quadrant 1 as northeast, quadrant 2 as northwest, quadrant 3 as southwest, and quadrant 4 as southeast. By the way, I have a question. In what way a weather forecaster gives the direction, movement, and location of a typhoon. It is necessary to determine it using the vector quantity. For example, the typhoon moves with a speed of 25 km per hour going northwest of Batanes. Sometimes, to be more precise, a typhoon moves with a speed of 25 km per hour 45 degrees west of northern Batanes. Another format for naming it is 25 km per hour north 45 degrees west. Now what's the difference? The difference is the angle in terms of degrees given to a vector quantity. The reason here is to be more precise in giving the location of the typhoon. As we can see the whole quadrant it is so huge in a way that a typhoon can be in any location in the quadrant. 
Thus, why angle concerning the location or movement is very important in naming a vector quantity. Again, it is okay to name it without the angle, but to be more precise, we need to do so. So, in naming a vector quantity, always consider the magnitude and the direction of it. Okay, in the next video, I will continue the lesson on vector addition and the different rules on it depending on a given case or problem. So, I hope you learn. Thank you.